Welcome to Movie Recaps. Follow us today to a 2007 English fictitious heist film called, Flawless. Before we start, no, there are spoilers. As our story starts, we see a hand rummaging in the mud and viewing what shows up as gemstones. The gemstones are truth be told, whole precious stones. Presently we see the bustling city of London and an older woman called Laura Quinn sitting in a bistro as her visitor shows up, a youthful paper correspondent by the name of Cassie, who desires to compose a tale regarding Laura. As they talk, Laura produces a jewel of 168 carats and has 58 aspects. Cassie is astonished and gets the precious stone as Laura recounts the narrative of how she took the precious stone from the London Diamond Company. At the point when Laura recounts her story, we return to 1960 in London. Laura, a youthful money manager, is entering the structure of the London Diamond Corporation where she fills in as a chief in a male overwhelmed organization. She says hey to an older cleaner called Mr. Hobbs. We see a man named Mr. Eaton being trailed by two men with little streetcars. Eaton opens a huge vault where they load the streetcars with jewels and take them to the work areas where they are inspected for imperfections. Outside, the proprietor of the organization known as MKA and his child Ali show up at the structure in the midst of a gathering of protesters. As they enter the workplace, the chiefs and staff are holding on to examine the most recent insight about 100 jewel laborers being killed at the mine site in Africa. Laura tells MK that the Russians will doubtlessly disavow the organization as a result of the awful press. MKA reports the new overseeing chief as Peter Boland. Laura isn't picked on the grounds that the organization won't break custom by making a lady overseeing chief. Afterward, we see Mr. Hobbs the cleaner enter Laura's office. He tells her that he trusts individuals should be strong and take what they want. Laura signs out of the structure, the last to leave not surprisingly. In the corridor the next day, Laura meets a man named Harold Reynolds who she met at Oxford University. He gives Laura a business card and recommends she could jump at the chance to work for Allied Banking, the organization he works for. The following morning, she observes her persuasive note and a negative reaction composed underneath. She additionally observes a film ticket with a meeting time composed on the back. Interest improves of her and in her midday break she goes to the film. As Laura enters the film, Mr. Hobbs is there and proposes they sit together. She is becoming irritated, however he tells her that he heard a discussion between the chiefs saying that her work will be ended quickly. He offers her an arrangement, taking an adequate number of jewels to make them rich, yet insufficient to be taken note. She's uncertain about whether to trust him or not and cautions Hobbs that he won't ever pull off that. Later working, Laura tracks down a letter of her work end. She then, at that point, chooses to plan to see Harry Reynolds. As Laura sits in a cafe with Harry, he tells her his organization can't extend to her an employment opportunity since she is clumsy. It appears to be that her organization has spread a few awful reports regarding her. That evening, she nods off on the couch and has a fantasy regarding the security men at work, getting her attempting to take jewels from the organization. The following evening, she goes to the canine rushes to track down Hobbs. She asks him how he can ransack the organization. Hobbs tells her he has an arrangement. In Hobbs' condo, he clarifies his arrangement. Since the vault codes are changed week after week, he will require Laura to observe the codes which are someplace in NKA's review at his home. Hobbs tells Laura, when she is going to a capacity at NKA's home to engage the Russians, she should observe the vault codes. He tells her that he can convey an adequate number of precious stones in his beverage bottle to see the two of them serenely resigned. The evening of the capacity, Laura converses with NKA's second in order, Mr. Jameson. He lets Laura know how Sir Sinclair, the organization's protection chief, was once embroiled in a healthcare coverage embarrassment however wasn't indicted. NKA presents Dmitrev, the top of the Russian Diamond Authority to them. Afterward, Laura strolls higher up and goes to MKA's review to search for the codes. Laura here strides and rapidly stows away as MKA enters and opens a little protected. She watches him and gives careful consideration of the protected code. Whenever he's left she opens the safe and tracks down the codes for the vault. The following day, Laura sees a man introducing a surveillance camera in the corridor. Later she meets Hobbs and lets him know that there are eight CCTV cameras being introduced. She lets him know the camera substitute on and off for 60 seconds all at once. He guarantees her that is sufficient time for him to get in and out of the vault. Then, Hobbs cleans the floor in the security room and times the cameras. In the cleaner's room, he takes a gander at his stopwatch then, at that point, takes his action. Checking his stopwatch out, he races to the vault and places in the code. In the meantime, Laura calls the security room as an interruption, 
to give Hobbs somewhat more time. Again he watches his stopwatch then, at that point, opens the vault and hustles rapidly down the passageway and away from the camera. Later we see Hobbs going home to return home. The following morning Laura watches Hobbs go home yet, the sign on the assistant gets back to Hobbs inside. Hobbs is required to unblock a latrine prior to leaving. Hobbs is at home exhausting his tea bottle and toe the sink, however there are no jewels. The following day, the jewel sorters have all returned home. Laura goes down to the hall and tracks down Jameson in a frenzy. Laura is in the women latrines when Mr. Eden calls her and takes her to the vault. As she enters, she can't accept the obvious reality. The vault is vacant. Mr. Eaton is showing a man named Finch the structure plans and tells him the just way into the vault is by the entryway. Presently MKA is telling the entirety of the administration staff that there will be no police examination in light of the fact that the exposure would demolish the organization. Sinclair presents Finch as the central protection examiner. Laura sees Hobbs in the entryway, yet he consoles her all as well. Afterward, Laura goes to MKA's office. We see a man called Boyle giving a letter to MKA in regards to the acquisition of some stock. Evidently Boyle knows nothing about his client's personality and the substance of the stock. Boyle is called out for a call. While he is out MKA peruses the letter which states that the jewels can be repurchased for 100 million pounds. Prior to leaving, Boyle hands a little bundle to MKA and afterward he leaves. MKA opens the bundle which contains an immense precious stone known as the South African Star. Afterward, Finch asks Laura a few inquiries. What's more notification that she's exceptionally anxious? The following morning Laura proposes to Jameson that she works with Finch to assist with his examinations. Laura observes Finch and they go down to the vault together. He tells her that CCTV cameras are not so secure due to a 60 seconds delay. Finch tells her there was no constrained section. She recommends that the cheat probably known the blend. We see Sinclair offer MKA a check for £5 million to purchase an adequate number of precious stones to continue to exchange however. MKA needs the precious stones back at this point. Whenever Finch recommends that MKA's child Ollie might have been involved, MKA blows his top and takes steps to demolish Sinclair on the off chance that he doesn't pay the payment. Presently we see Hobbs in an underground channel and Laura lets him know they should give the precious stones back and make an arrangement, however he tells her assuming she does that they will go to prison. We see Laura taking a gander at the plans of the structure when Finch comes in to take her fingerprints, similarly as a custom. He then, at that point, requests that she go with him while he questions Hobbs. While Finch questions Hobbs, a man comes in and summons Finch. Before Hobbs leaves the workplace, Laura lets him know they'll need to arrange or go to prison. He tells her, his goal is worth 100 lifetimes in prison. We see Finch taking a gander at Laura's prints and contrasting them in some from MKA's home. Presently Laura is opening Hobbs' storage to search for a sign to the precious stones. Afterward, Laura joins Finch for a beverage in a close-by bar. At the London Diamond Fabricating the press shows up after Sinclair has warned them. Sinclair's director, Sir Gottfried, attempts to keep down the press. MKA descends the steps then, at that point, experiences a respiratory failure and tumbles to the floor. Back in the bar, Finch asks Laura how she may do to eliminate every one of the jewels, however she guarantees him she isn't just brilliant. All of a sudden, Finch has recounted MKA's cardiovascular failure and he leaves. In the women latrines, Laura drops a jewel from her hoop in the sinks channel. She eliminates the line under and abruptly she understands how Hobbs more likely than not eliminated the precious stones. Laura takes a light and enters the underground channel framework. As she strolls through the passages, Hobbs shows up with a light. At the point when she threatens to turn him in he focuses a firearm at her and tells her she's remaining. She thumps the weapon from his hand then, at that point, goes through the passage, yet outings and falls then, at that point, sees a colossal precious stone on the floor, which she places in her pocket. Hobbs lets Laura know how his better half's malignant growth might have been eliminated yet the insurance agency made her stand by excessively lengthy for the medical procedure. By then, at that point, the disease was excessively forceful. Sinclair was the protection administrator at that point, who delayed the medical procedure. So Laura understands that Hobbs is getting his vengeance on Sinclair. Hobbs tells Laura. Sinclair took the one thing he genuinely adored. Gottfried tells Sinclair he has consented to pay. The payoff of 100 million pounds. Sinclair goes to his office and shoots himself. Laura lets Hobbs know how she dropped her jewel in the sink and afterward she sorted it out. Presently we see a flashback, 
when Hobbs was taking all the diamonds in his work trolley at intervals, to his workroom. Ali receives word that the ransom was deposited into the account but the note from Boyle showing the location of the diamonds is blank. We see how Hobbs emptied the diamonds down the sink then. The South African star was actually in the bottom of the toilet Hobbs was asked to clean. Now Hobbs points the gun at Laura and pulls the trigger. To his surprise, the gun was never loaded. He tells her it doesn't matter now because the money will have been paid. He turns off his torch and walks away. Laura walks down the tunnel and looks round the corner. There are all the diamonds, piled high at the end of the drain. Now we see men carrying boxes of diamonds out of the underground tunnel while Laura sits on the steps wrapped in a blanket. Finch tells her he has lost his 5% finder's fee because she found the diamonds. Laura is about to make an admission but Finch stops her. He says he would hate to see her spend the rest of her life behind bars. He says goodbye and leaves. She remembers the large diamond in her pocket, but she decides to keep it. We see Ollie telling the press that the diamonds were not stolen that allows them to photograph all the diamonds inside the vault. Dimitrov is seen signing a contract to secure his relationship with the company once again. Back to the present day, and Laura is again talking with Cassie, telling her that she left the company a month later. How she received a letter from a Swiss bank informing her of a deposit made to an account in her name of 100 million pounds. Laura hands Cassie manuscript of her story to be published, hoping it will inspire other women. At the end, we see how Laura donated all the money to worthy charities around the world. We see a photo of Laura with her husband and daughter. Cassie reads the final words of the manuscript. It's a remarkable world out there will you be a giver or a taker? She walks outside to look for Laura but she's already gone. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.